Rush Hour, as a game mode, has had a troubled history. The initial release of the inventory was met with high concern and low interest, and the initial release of Rush Hour itself was kind of underwhelming. There were only two maps included with the game. A third was made, but it was put on hiatus to be visually revamped. But even then, three wouldn't really have been enough for the mode. And two was just... sad. Which is why I'm happy to announce today that we've got six maps in the works. We don't know exactly when all of them are going to be added to the game, as some will probably need more work than others, but they're going to add much needed difficulty variety and be better quality in general. This last month I've been slaving away trying to figure out the perfect way to make a fun Rush Hour map. For those of you who saw and played Mart's Lock, you might have noticed that I mentioned that originally it was going to be for the game, but was declined due to our strict standards. That's not entirely true, actually. I did assume it would be declined based on our strict standards, but I never actually got confirmation and decided just to publish the map anyways. I did this mostly because it was a testing ground for a new technique where I could get feedback from the community. You see, one of the problems with Rush Hour, at least in my opinion, is the current way that most maps spawn trains. A bunch of trains spawn all at once, and then they just stop spawning. This method is bad because it splits the wave into two kind of annoying sections. The first is rushing and pressuring yourself to get every train onto the map as fast as you can, and just making sure they're on the map and nothing else. And the second is then trying to slowly figure out how to correctly route them to their destinations, based on the track layout that you've made. The first half is overwhelming, the second half is underwhelming. It doesn't really feel dynamic, fluid, it just feels forced. Mart's Lock went out to test the theory that a lower amount of trains spawning per minute, but more time for trains to spawn, was a better and healthier way to make these rush hour maps work. While Mart's Lock has been anything but a smash hit for popularity, the critical feedback I've received has seemed to confirm the fact that this has worked. To quote one avid playtester, Compare this to some of the first Rush Hour maps, where train storage is an essential part of the gameplay. There is some parking and queuing needed here, but it's not as intense slash ridiculous as those maps where you just welcome all incoming trains into the map and park everything here and there along the route to be sorted out later. The experience in this map was really great. It's a little bit different, as mentioned before, but your waves seemed to offer one to two new trains in different stations every now and again when I thought that this was all of it, so the warning bells keep ringing most of the time, keeping the player alert longer. Compare this to the previous example, where after everything is on the map, it just suddenly shifts into a puzzle game of botched routing rather than a rush hour, since there's no real pressure on the player to keep things moving quickly. Because of this positive reception, I've been experimenting more with this technique and improving it more and more. Moving forward, it's probably going to be the only technique I really use. After all, the dynamic gameplay is just generally more fun. It makes the maps actually feel like something more than just a gridlock is happening. I'm sure some of you might be asking, what did I do to make this change? Well, to understand that, we need to go to the editor. Here, in Rush Hour, there are three special settings. Onset Duration, Onset Intensity, and Train Enter Timeout. Timeout is self-explanatory. That's the amount of time in in-game minutes that it takes before a train will be considered too late and the player will lose. We really don't need to care about that. Five minutes is a reasonable amount of time. Onset Duration and Onset Intensity, however, those are problematic. Specifically, though, I want to talk about the onset intensity, which is set to a whopping 80% initially. 100% intensity means that one train will want to spawn per platform per station every minute. 50% intensity means a train wants to spawn once every two minutes, and 33% intensity is once every three minutes, so on and so forth. The default of 80% leads to a high train density and means that you can't really have trains spawn for very long without the map becoming impossible very quickly. However, just one sudden burst of trains really isn't all that interesting. You really want to have a longer onset duration. 
So instead of going for, say, 80% onset intensity, why not go for 30%? This is roughly one train every three minutes per platform. A little longer than that, but still. The lower train density allows you to have a longer period of time for trains to spawn, which in turn allows you to have a more dynamic experience for your level. So the next time you make a level, consider doing this trick. It's fairly simple, and it makes for a much more fun experience, both for you and the player. If you weren't someone who enjoyed Rush Hour when it was first released, why don't you give it a chance in the next big update? There'll be a whole slew of new maps in this new style. It still won't be a cakewalk, but hey, hopefully the experience will be more entertaining to you in the end. Anyways, uh, time for an awkward ending. Cheers, folks.